It's difficult to keep your dog safe from fleas and ticks using natural flea and tick prevention. So, what do you do if going natural isn't working for you? And you and your dog are dealing with a flea or tick infestation that is out of control. All that scratching. You're both desperate for release, and you're both looking for it now. Hi, this is Russell from Happy Lovely Dogs. In this video I want to talk about the safest way also the riskiest to prevent fleas and ticks you may as well throw in the towel and go with the big guns, pharmaceutical flea and tick control. But don't become discouraged. Here's what you'll need to go through all of the choices and discover the most effective flea and tick prevention for your dog. The many kinds of flea and tick preventives have been rated in reverse order of safety, from riskiest to safest. Number 1 Definitely not safe, oral flea and tick preventatives. These are the most egregious offenders, as well as the most hazardous to use on your dog. They're given to your dog orally, typically as a pleasant chew. Asoxazolines are included in these medications. They're also typically only accessible with a doctor's prescription. Many of these medicines include a family of chemicals called asoxazolines. They're non-competitive GABA, gamma-aminobutyric acid, receptor antagonists. This implies they bind to chloride channels within the flea or tick. In plainer English, they inhibit nerve impulses, which paralyzes and kills the bugs. How oral flea and tick preventatives work. When you feed your dog asoxazolines, they operate systemically. This implies they're taken into his blood and they impact the whole body. When fleas and ticks feast on your dog's blood, they ingest the toxins and get immobilized and die. The Food and Drug Administration FDA, has warned pet owners and veterinarians that there's risk for brain harm when taking medicines in the asoxazoline family. The responses include muscular tremors, poor mobility, loss of coordination and convulsions. After evaluating as many brands of oral chews and pills as we could discover, here's a list of active substances you'll want to look for on the label. Active ingredients in oral flea and tick meds. The first list below are chemicals used exclusively to prevent flea and tick bites and infestations. They're powerful and deadly enough. They include acaricides that are insecticides toxic to ticks and mites. Ectoparasiticides are to treat external parasites like fleas, ticks, lice, mites and flies. The second section covers antiparasitic chemicals also known as anthemintics. This implies they expel parasites like worms. These are dewormers added to the flea and tick products. You should avoid this combination of medicines since it raises the danger to your dog. Flea and tick medicines are typically taken for 8 months, or longer if you're in a warm area. But you should never treat your dog for worms unless he has them. And if he does, there's no need to administer a dewormer for the whole flea season. So if you see components from the first list and the second list, you're receiving unneeded and severe dewormers. This is on top of hazardous flea and tick medicines. Some claim to prevent as many as six different insects and worms, including fleas, ticks, lice, worms and heartworm. This is a lot of needless medicine and may lead to some fairly severe adverse effects, particularly when your dog doesn't need the additional medications. Ingredients against fleas and ticks, a foxalana, a member of the asoxazoline family. Fluorolana, for systemic usage and also a part of the asoxazoline family. It is the sole active component contained in one type of chews that lasts for 12 weeks. Sarolana, an acaricide and insecticide also belongs to the asoxazoline family. Lotilana, an ectoparasiticide belongs to the asoxazoline family, having a month duration spinosad, produced from soil bacteria that is poisonous to insects and found in garden bug spray lufanuron, reduces flea infestations by inhibiting the hatching of eggs, and inhibits the flea shell from forming unnecessary dewormers often included, milbomycin oxime, used as a wide-range antiparasitic for heartworm and internal parasites like hookworm and roundworm moxidectin, an antiparasitic to manage heartworm and intestinal parasites pyrantal, an anthemintic or dewormer prazicantel an anthemintic used for parasites like tapeworms. The problem with oral flea and tick meds. The issue with poisoning fleas and ticks is that you'll also poison the host, and that's your dog. The idea behind the soxazolines is that your dog is a lot bigger than a flea, so they think a small amount of poison won't harm him. And that may occasionally be accurate. But what happens if you feed your dog a tiny quantity of this poison every month for years? The manufacturer, Zoetis in one research, doesn't really know what occurs, since safety tests were only done for three months. Side effects of oral flea and tick meds. But dog owners have experienced some very severe negative effects. 
they're typically neurological in origin, like seizures. That's because most of these treatments kill the bugs by targeting the nerve system and paralyzing them. Side effects from these medications include, tremors, seizures, ataxia, stumbling, falling, incoordination, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite, skin irritations and lethargy. These signs indicate that dogs are being poisoned along with their pests. They're experiencing the same neurological problems that kill the fleas and ticks. So every dog is in danger. And you just need to go through social media at dedicated sites where devastated owners recount the convulsions their pets experienced before they died. Even the inactive components in chews are unpleasant. They may not be mentioned, but may contain things like natural flavors that aren't natural, carbohydrates, sugars and preservatives, to name a few. Before we continue on the other's unsafe flea and tick preventions in dogs, hit the like button so the other dog owners also can view this video. Number 2 Pretty Unsafe flea and tick collars. The second riskiest type is impregnated flea and tick collars that your dog wears all day and all night for as long as eight months. So that they're under your dog's nose all the time. The absorption of substances is via the skin. And unlike oral flea and tick preventives, your dog isn't meant to consume them. But accidents happen. A number of them, according to reports from the Environmental Protection Agency EPA. Even if your dog doesn't get out of his collar and gnaw on it, another dog at the park or in the family could. It may easily come off and become a chew toy. And that's a very hazardous chew toy. Just read about the components that follow. Unlike oral flea treatments, these collars may not require a prescription. That implies a family might possibly have many on hand that could easily slip into the wrong hands. The EPA reveals that from January 2012 to mid-June 2020, it received incident reports concerning only one brand, Ceresto Collars, documenting 1,698 pet fatalities. And more than 73,000 injuries classified as mild, moderate or severe. There were nearly 1,000 complaints of damage to people. That includes a 12-year-old kid who experienced convulsions and vomiting after sharing his bed with a dog wearing the collar. The product registration form submitted with the EPA advises that youngsters should avoid contact and shouldn't play with the collars. Active ingredients in flea and tick collars. Flumethrin, a synthetic pyrethroid, in the same category as insecticides is permethrin. Pyrethroids paralyze the insect's neurological systems. Pyrethroid, a synthetic chemical class of insecticides isolated from the chrysanthemum. Permethrin is one of such pesticides. Permethrin poisons the central nervous system. Deltamethrin, another synthetic form of pyrethrin from the chrysanthemum. It's an insecticide used in malaria control and is a coating on mosquito nets. Imidacloprid, it's a neonicotinoid insecticide used for crop protection and in pet pesticides. Tetrachlorvinfos, it's an insecticide. It's utilized as a medicine, pesticide and nerve agent is a weapon used as an oral larvicide in cattle and against flies in dairy. Kills fleas, ticks, lice, chiggers, mites, spiders and wasps. Methoprene, slow-acting pesticide that interferes with the development cycle of an insect to prevent it from developing and reproducing. Pyroproxifen, used in insecticides, it mimics a natural hormone in insects and inhibits eggs from hatching. It's used to control fleas, cockroaches, ticks, ants, carpet beetles and mosquitoes. How flea and tick collars work. The chemicals in these collars leak into the environment surrounding your dog and into his skin. Then the chemical circulates through the bloodstream. When a flea or tick sucks blood from your dog it's contaminated with the poison and dies. This occurs over many months while your dog wears the collar. These collars are for exterior use exclusively, but how does your dog know that? He cleans himself by licking his skin and hair. He'll readily absorb the collar's insecticides that spread into his hair and skin over many months, across his entire body. Your dog is a mammal and they tolerate pyrethroid pesticides such as flumethrin far better than insects like fleas. For insects the toxicity is 1000 times greater. But bear in mind a flea or tick only bites once. Your dog gets continuous exposure via his skin and breathing, or he may have open wounds, thus the effect may be much more severe. Side effects of flea and tick collars. The chemicals employed in these collars include neurotoxins, endocrine disruptors and immunosuppressants. 
They may produce these signs and symptoms, nausea, vomiting, seizures, diarrhea, salivation, tremors and convulsions, hyperactivity and hypersensitivity to touch or sound, inflammation, kidney and liver damage, organ toxicity, disrupts normal action of antioxidants, thyroid damage and abortions and birth malformations beware fake flea collars. Flea and tick control is huge business so it's no surprise that there are counterfeit products competing for a piece of the pie. The well-known Ceresto flea collar raked approximately $300 million in sales in 2019. This success draws lots of knockoffs. You need to watch for phony name brand collars and off brands as well. The fake collars may not protect your pet from fleas and ticks. In fact, the compounds may be much more dangerous than toxins in the actual thing. They may cause serious sickness as well as burns. The real producers say that some of the complaints of harm to dogs are attributable to the phony collars. If purchasing a Ceresto collar, acquire it from a trustworthy source, such a vet supply business. Don't purchase it from an unknown internet site or even Amazon or eBay. You may go via the buyer website, the manufacturer, to obtain a list of local and online approved merchants. If you think you have a phony collar, you need to contact buyer immediately. Give them the lot number and serial number of the product and find out whether they produced it. In the news earlier in 2021, the US House Subcommittee on Economic and Consumer Policy called on Alanco, maker of the Ceresto collar, to temporarily recall the collar. The business declined to do so but is recording customer complaints is required along with its internal correspondence regarding collar safety and sales volume. In their response answering this request, Alanco cited more than 25 million collars sold in the US. The incident report rate for all adverse occurrences was 3%. The basic arithmetic is that 750,000 animals experienced some sort of response to the Ceresto collar since 2012. So even a modest proportion of issues is a lot of injured animals. Number 3 Safer but still risky. There are two kinds of goods in this category. I. Spot on flea and tick prevention. The third greatest risk group is the pharmaceutical topical therapies usually termed spot-ons. That's because they're administered to your dog by dropping the medicine into areas along your dog's back. In general, you'll want to use the ones with the fewest components. Just like the oral preventives, avoid spot-ons containing additional chemicals that cover a variety of pests. If your dog isn't infected with numerous bugs he doesn't require the extra treatment and the poisons that go with it. Active ingredients in spot-ons. Fipronil is a broad-spectrum insecticide that belongs to the phenylpherazole chemical family. It affects the insect's central nervous system and causes hyperexcitation of its nerves and muscles. Imidacloprid is a systemic pesticide that works as an insect neurotoxin to target the central nervous system of sucking pests like fleas. It's also harmful to honeybees and mimics the effects of nicotine on insects. Permethrin, as stated in number 2. Also used to cure lice. Pyroproxifen, as stated in number 2. Moxidectin, as stated in number 1. Dinotefurin, of a family of neuroactive insecticides known as neonicotinoids that are chemically related to nicotine. It does not need ingestion by the insect to be effective. S. Methoprene, a pesticide that inhibits growth and development. It inhibits egg laying and hatching, so pests don't proliferate. Selamectin is an antiparasitic and antihelminthic pesticide used in dogs to treat heartworms, fleas, ear mites, and sarcoptic mange. It's a dewormer and an insecticide. How spot on flea and tick prevention works. Topical flea and tick preventives are administered as liquid along a dog's back, typically between the shoulder blades. They're absorbed into the skin, then chemicals circulate into the circulation and move into the sebaceous glands. The active component releases and travels through the glands that lubricate a dog's coat with oil. When an insect sucks blood from your dog the chemical infects it and it dies. Like other products given to your dog by mouth or bloodstream, they stay in your dog's system. Some products are longer lasting in your dog than others. Shorter duration is a positive thing. That means it exits your dog's system more rapidly and you may not need to reapply it. But your dog licks himself to clean himself. And the chemicals circulate through his body. So even though the treatment was on his back, no matter where he licks, the chemicals get released via his skin throughout his body. Side effects of spot-ons. The EPA's pesticide division discovered that fipronil penetrates the body and may be contained in the fat, organs, urine and feces of dogs. 
The EPA also observed that the majority of the responses to fipronil included systemic as well as application site, digestive, neurological and behavioral problems. The most frequent clinical symptoms were skin responses including hair loss, itching, and redness, dermatitis, sores, irritation, hair changes at the application site, Neurological problems include uncontrolled movement and lethargy brief exposure to S. Methoprene may cause mild or severe skin irritation in people. Higher doses in dogs may cause vomiting, dilated pupils, changes in behavior, changes in breathing and changes in muscular control. Imidacloprid has caused skin irritation in pet owners after applying spot-on products to their animals. Pro tip, if you've decided to use a medicated flea and tick spot-on, you may not require the entire dosage. You may give your dog only a drop or two of the spot on therapy. Start with a little to see whether you are receiving results. You may always raise the dose. 2. Medicated flea and tick shampoos and sprays. This is a second item in the safer but still risky category. Medicated flea and tick shampoos and sprays include hazardous chemicals, much like the other kinds of preventives. Using them may help keep the bugs away, but you're also exposing your dog to additional poisons. Active ingredients in flea and tick shampoos. Pet shampoos are already loaded with hazardous chemicals including phthalates, formaldehyde, neurotoxins like methylisothiazolinone, plus propylene glycol and sodium benzoate. They include artificial smells and colors and a few dozen additional chemicals you'd prefer not put on your dog. Medicated flea and tick shampoos contain active substances like these, permethrins, as stated in number 2. Piperonal butoxide, acts with a pesticide to enhance its efficacy. It inhibits enzymes in an insect's body to enable pesticides to enter. N-octyl bicycloheptine dicarboxamide, increases the pesticide characteristics of other insecticides. These represent 1% of the total components. And the rest are the components of a regular shampoo, poisons and all. Any shampoo kills fleas. There's no advantage to giving your dog a wash with a medicated flea and tick shampoo. Giving your dog a wash with a shampoo composed of natural components can smother fleas as efficiently as dousing him in a medicated shampoo, without the toxic chemicals. Pro tip, don't forget, if your dog has fleas, you need to treat your house and yard for fleas, as well as your dog. Number 4 Safe Flea and Tick Prevention for Your Dog Now that you know about the risky products, here are some safe, natural methods to prevent fleas and ticks on your dog. But first, a warning. Label reading doesn't end when you reach for natural flea and tick prevention. Even with so-called natural products, always check at the ingredients, since some claim they're natural when they're not actually. One example is a spray with the term organics in the name. But it includes certain inactive components you don't want, like sodium benzoate. It may induce inflammation in animals, free radicals that contribute to oxidative stress and allergic responses. Safe flea and tick repellents. Natural sprays should include as few chemicals as possible. Watch alert for changing formulae. Two goods that used to include only two components, cedar oil with hydrated silica, now include extras like sodium lauryl sulfate and mineral oil, additives to avoid. When you create anything yourself, you can manage your components. Here are recipes for flea and tick treatments utilizing essential oils that are safe for your dog. Essential oils. Essential oils may frequently come to the rescue when it comes to repelling fleas and ticks. You may use essential oils to create your own repellent, collars, bandanas and shampoos. Mind that essential oils are extremely powerful, so never use them undiluted on your dog. One drop of a plant's essential oil is more than 75 times stronger than its herbal equivalent. Just 3 to 6 drops of essential oil to an ounce of carrier oil like sweet almond oil is a decent ratio and not all essential oils are suitable for dogs. Some oils are harmful to dogs therefore you want to be cautious when selecting them. Remember that your dog's sense of smell is hundreds of times more sensitive than yours. Here's a list of oils to use and oils to avoid from canine herbalist Rita Hogan. They are specialized for flea and tick prevention. Safe essential oils for dogs, cedarwood, grapefruit, rosewood, myrrh, apoponax, bay leaf, lavender, lemon, lemon eucalyptus, eucalyptus, radiata, palmarosa, cedar, atlantica, clary sage, peppermint, don't apply near your dog's face, and rosemary, avoid for dogs with seizures. Avoid these unsafe essential oils for dogs, 
tea tree, cinnamon, clove, garlic, pennyroyal, sweet basil, birch, anise, wintergreen, oregano and thyme collars and bandanas. You may make your own flea and tick collar by using diluted essential oils as described above. Then put a few drops on a cloth collar or bandana that your dog will wear. But use them for excursions only. Take them off when your dog gets inside so he's not breathing in the oils 24-7. Flea and Tick Tags There are many brands of tags that function vigorously. They start functioning after 2-3 to three weeks on your dog's collar and must remain on your dog 24-7. If you take the collar off at night, leave it where your dog sleeps so it stays active. They typically persist for a year. Supplement with a natural spray while heading out in the woods. You'll discover plenty of choices online and in natural pet shops. Amber Collars Amber is a petrified resin, which is a result of trees. Amber flea collars originate from stones of amber. They're milky in color and rough, and strung on a thread and secured with a leather or linen buckle. Baltic Amber, from the Baltic Sea, has a very high acid content of 8% making it the most utilized. The acid component in Amber interacts with static electricity generated by the stones rubbing against your dog's hair. This is what repels fleas and ticks. Many believe that the longer a pet wears an Amber collar, the better it functions. There's a significant variation in the quality and durability. You should pick your size carefully and make sure you're purchasing from a trustworthy vendor that only utilizes genuine Baltic Amber. Safe Flea and Tick Shampoo If your dog is prone to picking up fleas, you may wash him more frequently at the height of flea season. And don't forget to maintain cleaning your home regularly. Choose shampoos produced with natural ingredients and no chemicals. Look for components like these in one Safe Flea and Tick Organic Shampoo for dogs, aloe vera juice, coconut oil, shea butter, olive oil, sunflower oil, jojoba oil, sweet orange essential oil, neem oil, rosemary extract. It's quite a contrast from what you'll see with medicated flea and tick washes, or even regular pet shampoos. Or create your own. Add a few drops of a safe, bug repellent essential oil to unscented castile soap to create a safe flea and tick wash for your dog. Pro tip, if you walk in the woods with your long-haired dog, you'll want to check for ticks after each trip. To accomplish this you may use a hairdryer on its cold setting to blow his fur. The fur will separate so you can look through to his flesh and detect any ticks that may be creeping around or fastened on. Clean up your dog's lifestyle. A healthy dog isn't a suitable host for fleas and ticks. Start your dog's path to excellent health before flea season starts. Here are some lifestyle adjustments to start with. Feed a full food, raw meat diet. Avoid chemicals, pesticides, fertilizers and hazardous cleansers. Minimize vaccinations and pharmaceutical medicines. Add finely chopped fresh organic garlic to your dog's food every day. Allow it to rest for 10 minutes after dicing. Give a big dog up to two cloves a day. Smaller dogs may have up to one clove. Sprinkle food grade diatomaceous earth on your dog's hair from his ears to his tail to dry out ticks and fleas. Beware of what the packages don't say. As you've seen above, you'll need to do a lot of reading between the lines when it comes to flea and tick prevention. Here's a reminder of some things to beware about. Duration of prevention. Avoid the longer lasting 8 to 12 week products. Longer prevention implies a more powerful substance and longer duration in your dog's system. Additional deworming or heartworm medicines. Don't treat worms your dog doesn't have. And if he does, seek for natural answers. And heartworm medications don't prevent heartworm. They only cure heartworms already in your dog, so handle that issue individually. Multiple active components. That's an indication that it's treating other parasites in addition to fleas and ticks. And active ingredients. Often these aren't on the label. But they might represent as much as 90% or more of the output. It's better to search for a product that specifies all the components. Watch your dog for side effects. This comes at the end yet it's a crucial aspect of dog ownership. You should constantly monitor your dog like a hawk for any changes in his day-to-day -day behavior. If you choose to utilize any of these items, please be particularly attentive. Monitor your dog daily. That implies for many months or longer, depending on the length of the product. Once it's in his body, you can't remove it. And that's particularly true of the long-lasting oral flea and tick preventives. Side effects may take a while to develop. 
you'll want to watch for neurological symptoms including coordination, staggering, tremors, seizures, skin irritation such as redness, itching or other indications of pain, gastrointestinal symptoms such as vomiting or diarrhea, lethargy or agitation. If you see anything odd, contact your holistic veterinarian immediately. Walking the natural path requires a lot of bravery. It takes even more guts to acknowledge you may need some additional assistance. Along with that assistance comes knowledge to help you make the best choice possible for your dog. That's all I want to talk about fleas and ticks prevention in dogs. I recommend you to check the best training for dogs in the description box below. I'm Russell from Happy Lovely Dogs, see you in the next video.